Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with a category used book haul. So I think every book in this bag, I have a giant bag beside me of books, I think every book in this bag is category romance except for like two, maybe three. Two I'm sure of. I Legit, you guys, I can't even remember what I picked up at this point. So this was not intended. This was not my plan for today. I'm filming this on Saturday. Uh, I had some time this afternoon and I said to my husband, do you want to go out for a little drive? Get out for a bit? He's like, yeah. So there's a couple of thrift stores that I really like. So one is this Bibles for Missions, I think it's called. And their books were like, they're a dollar a piece for these books. And they had like 30% off or something like that. So I got that. And then I think at that store, I spent like $13. And then at the other store that I went to, um, they have these bins. I've talked about this store before. They have these bins of Harlequin novels, like Harlequin and Silhouette novels that um, I guess, you know, they get so many of them in because people like, you know, you read them and most people are not like crazy like me and collect them and you know they get rid of them and they can't really sell them for a lot of money because most people don't want to pay a lot for them to be completely honest so they put them in these bins and these bins are four of them for a dollar fifty and i think i spent maybe six dollars or something at that store so all in total a little over twenty dollars yeah, and guys, I got a giant bag of books here. I have no idea how many books in total that I got. I will try and put it, you guys will probably already see because I'll probably put like book haul X number of books that I got in the title of this video. So as of right now, I do not know. I was just grabbing stuff and yeah, it's fun, you guys. It's fun. So I haven't traded myself in a while. And like I said, I spent $20. <laughs> I don't get myself coffees, like I don't stop and get coffee generally on my way to work or a tea, get all that stuff at home. I don't generally eat out, like I make my lunch, I take it to work. So this is how I treat myself and we all should be able to treat ourselves every now and then. So the first book is one of the ones that is not a category. It's a Sweet Valley Twins book and this is The Curse of the Golden Heart. This is a super chiller. I am trying to collect these ones as well. I mentioned this in my most recent vlog that, um, Anytime I see one of these, I go ahead and pick it up. So yeah, so I have now got that one as well. So that is going to go on the shelf up here with the other Sweet Valley Twins books that I have. So there is that. Okay, so I'm just going to reach into here at random and just pull them out and share them with you guys. There is no rhyme or reason to any of these. So first of all, we have Baby's First Christmas by Marie Farinella. This is Silhouette or Harlequin, special, which would now be the Harlequin Special Edition line. Um, this is the Baby of the Month Club. It's number 997, clearly a Christmas book. Um, and this was originally published in December of 1995. So there is that. Very exciting. Then we have uh, Heartless Stranger by Elizabeth Duke. This is Harlequin Romance number 337. Now, that's an old number. I, what I think it, I think that this might be one of the, um, cause this is from July of 97. This might be one of the, um, subscription ones cause they, they did an entire line that was like subscription. So if you subscribed to Harlequin books and you got them in the mail, they had a completely separate grouping of books. So this might have been one of them. I'm thinking, yeah, first North American publication, 97. Um, so yeah, so there is that one though. I will have to look into this one a little bit more and see. Uh, next we have a much more recent book. Um, this was one of the ones that was like 30% off or something like that. So we have Cold Case Cowboy by Jennifer Morey. So this is a Harlequin uh, romantic suspense novel and it is number 2185. This is from June of 2022. This is from last month, you guys, last month. Like that is crazy. I love the cover. Like practically brand new. It's been read because you can see the crease on the spine. So somebody read this and they must have picked them up and there was a couple of them that I got that were like from last month, which is very exciting. And then I got uh, Love Inspired. This is Rebuilding Her Life by Ruth Logan Hearn. Um, so there is that one. No idea what number this one is because they are not labeled. Um, but uh, this one was published in April of 2021. But somebody put their initials on the inside to denote that they've read it. 
which I kind of really like that. So yay. All right. What else do we have in here? Back into grab a couple here. Okay. I am so thrilled. I think I found four of these and I've never, ever, ever seen these before. And I am so excited. Um, yeah, this is just like, this is so exciting. So this is a book called Ghost Ship and this is by Becky Stewart. And this is a first love from silhouette, first love from silhouette right down there. This is silhouette romances way back in the day. This is their YA line. Like this is their young adult, like they're equivalent to the sweet dreams romances. I have never seen these out in the wild and I'm so excited. So this is number 189 and it says intro on it. I don't know what the date is on it here. Let me see. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, 1986. Yeah. This is book three in the Kellogg and Carrie stories by Becky Stewart. So there's one called journeys End, someone else. And then this one. So I'm just going to read the back of this for you through the driving rain and high winds of a fierce summer storm. Carrie had spotted a sail. No one believed her, not even Kellogg until the next day, a battered dinghy washed up on the beach. Had there been a ship out there or was it a ghost ship doomed again to fla to flounder in the storm tossed waters off Long Island? Well, Kellogg and Carrie will would find out even if it meant prying into a romance far older than the one they were just beginning to discover for themselves. So it's, um, I guess this was a, a trilogy of books about the same couple. Ah! But I mean, like, it's about a ghost ship, but it's like, YA, like, come on. I was so excited to find this. I need to read one of these, like, immediately. I'm very excited. So like I said, I found four of those. That was the only a Kellogg and Carrie story. I need to find the other two. I might have to go on thrift books to, to hunt them out. Um, I got a Love Inspired Historical. These are harder to come by. There was not a lot of these put out, um, but I do really, really like them. So we have A Temporary Family by Sherry Shackelford part of the Prairie Courtship series. Again, I don't know what number this is. It's an inspirational historical romance. And um, this was published in March of 1990, March of 1990, March of 2017. <laughs> it's been a long day, you guys. I'm filming this later in the day if you can't tell from the horrible lighting in this room. But yeah, like a lot of these historical, love inspired historicals took place in the American West. Um, it was a big, big theme within these. You saw very few of these set in Regency times or anything like that. The majority of these were American West stories. Uh, I have another love inspired here. This is, I mean, I did get a whole lot of these at that missions for Bible store, whatever it's called. So getting the more religious ones makes sense. And I, Elizabeth from Lizzie Fay loves books. If you're watching this, I was thinking about you. I wish I, I didn't have my phone on me. I left it at home accidentally, but there was like this whole section that was just like Christian fiction and nonfiction. <laughs> and I thought this is Elizabeth's place. Um, but anyway, we have Mending the Widow's Heart by Mia Ross, uh, Love Inspired. This is from October of 1997. So a contemporary inspirational romance. So yeah, there's that one. Looks super cute. I do, I do really, really like those books. So what else do we have here? Uh, another pile of books. I got a historical. This is written in the heart by Judith Stacy. Um, this one looks really cute because again, it didn't look Regency to me. It didn't look American West. Like I didn't know what the time period was and I should have checked while I was there, but I like literally had like my pile of books and I couldn't stop and open it up. Um, this was from, uh, 1896 takes place in Los Angeles, California. Ooh, surely there was an easier way for a woman to get work. Uh, Caroline Summerfield shifted on the leather seat of the handsome cab, mentally rehearsing the speech she'd prepared. She'd waited weeks for this chance. She wasn't about to waste it, even if it meant sneaking around and lying about her whereabouts tonight. Already I'm intrigued and I just want to start reading it. That sounds really good. So the turn of the century... And 1800s into the 1900s in, in California. Love it. Love it. Yay. Um, another one. I hate this giant sticker on here. Side note. This is a, what is this? 
This is an intrigue novel, you guys. I couldn't tell again because of the giant ugly sticker. So this is an intrigue novel. You can't see it, but I guarantee you it's a, it's a Harlequin intrigue novel. Wed to a Stranger by Jewel McBride. This is part of the uh, Hidden Identity series. Like, look at the giant cover. It's ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, her husband had vanished. He left. Well, he's right there, I think. <laughs> Found him. Um, he left no trace except a pregnant bride. A year later, Fritzy Fitzgerald. Oh, you poor soul. Um, Fritzy Fitzgerald's search for him. Say that three times fast. Uh, led to a remote Alaskan village. And when a man carrying his ID is murdered, Fritzy stands accused. Ooh. That one's... Side, outside of the extremely ugly cover, that sounds really good. So, you know, it's an intrigue. I love the intrigue books. Uh, next we have... Okay, so I picked this one out for the soul fact when I looked at the cover. <laughs> oh, so let me... Sorry, let me go back to the intrigue. This is number 418. And the publication date on this one is, I don't know what it is, what year it is. Unfortunately, it looks like it's got a bit of damage here, you guys. 1997. Oh, there's a map. That's fun. But it looks like there is actually some damage, unfortunately. Look at that, you guys. I might have to throw this one out. I don't know. I might throw this out and look for a copy of it on Thrift Books. Luckily, I think it cost me like not even 50 cents. So I didn't realize that when I grabbed it. But yeah, when I open this up, like it doesn't look good. So I think I'm going to have to sanitize my hands after. I'm going to put that over there away from the other books. Uh, but anyway, back to this book. Remind me not to touch my face. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to get some hand sanitizer just because that makes me a little bit nervous. And we're back all sanitized. Okay, so <laughs> on to the next book. <laughs> I might be, I, it, it like, it looks white. Like it looks like there's something on the pages. So I'm going to completely throw that out, but I am going to, um, look for it on the thrift books. It sounds really good. So anyway, the next book that I got, I got this one because it was sitting on like an end cap and I saw the cover and my immediate thought was, oh my God, it's William and Kate, like the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. That's who this couple looked like. It's uncanny. This book was published in 1992, June of night, July of 1992. This is another silhouette now Harlequin special edition novel number 753. Is that not William and Kate? Like, come on. Like, <laughs> from 92, you guys. Oh, I just, I, I just chuckled when I saw, like from a distance, I'm like, kind of look, it's the receding hairline, I think. But yeah. So this is called Swiss Bliss by Bevelyn Marshall. Again, number 753 from July of 92. For U.S. hotel consultant Suzanne Barnes, a stint in a glorious but remote Swiss inn seemed tailor-made to showcase her efficiency while protecting her emotions. Surely in the homeland of, uh, homeland of Heidi, her heart would be safe. But behind the Kaiser, Kaiser Grand's sedate facade, I can talk, the alpine air seethed with animosity. The quaint crannies concealed a crook. And Heidi, Heidi was a housekeeper. More alarming still was the magnetic Maximilian Kaiser, whose cool demeanor, demeanor narrowly concealed his passion for his family, for his work, for Suzanne. So his name is Maximilian. So yeah, I'm going to call him William and that's Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, what else do we have in this bag? All right, grab a bunch out here. So we have, oops, this one got bent. We have Man with a Past by Kate K. Stockholm. This is part of the Going Back series. This is a Harlequin super romance novel. Love these ones. This is number 1247, and it is from, what's the date on this one? Doesn't list the date on the outside. Um, 2006, 2006. I did love these books, the special editions or super romances. If you love the special editions, you'll really like the super romances. So if you spy them in your thrift store, pick them up. You will not be disappointed. We have a love inspired suspense. This is another one of the more recent ones that I was talking about. So we have Tracing a Fugitive by Hope White. Um, this is part of the Boulder Creek Ranch 
pardon me, novel series. I don't know what number this is, but this is also from June of 1997. Or, good Lord. June of 2022. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. It's almost time for dinner, friends. Rescuing a stranger could get her killed. Yes, be careful with that. Um, yeah, the puppy dog on the cover. Super awesome. Uh, another love inspired. I don't, sadly, I don't know if I have this one, but it looked good. Um, the Ranchers Answered Prayer by Arlene James. This is um, a love inspired. So it is a, of course, a um, inspirational romance. A single mom, a bachelor cowboy, and an inheritance forcing them to share three brothers ranch. So yeah, so I don't know. I might have this one digitally and that might be why it's, you know, tinging in my brain but we shall see when I add it to my um, list. So yeah, there's that one. Another uh, super romance. We have Baby Business by Brenda Novak. Um, this is number 955 and it is from, why are the dates not on any of these? This is just weird to me. Um, 2000, this came out in 2000. So there we go. Harlequin Super Romance. Another pile here. Oh, I love the cover on this one. So this is Under an, an Anirondack Sky by Karen Rock. This is a Walsh family story novel. This is a Harlequin heartwarming novel, which if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that these are sweet romances. So there is no adult content in these, but they are not inspirational. So they're not a Christian fiction. They're just a... Um, non-adult content or behind closed doors, whatever you want to call it, story. And these are also large print, which I love. So yeah. Can he juggle everything, including her? So yeah, that one looks really, really great. Somebody must have had a subscription. You don't generally see these ones in the wild because they don't sell them in stores here. Um, we have another love inspired suspense novel. Um, this is Treacherous Skies by Elizabeth Goddard. I love that cover. So you're getting like the shot up from the palm tree and then the plane. So this one must take place in like Florida or something. After years of peace and quiet, Maya Carpenter thinks she's safe. That her drug lord father's world will never catch up with her. Then she's abducted and secretly stashed on a plane. And once she and the test pilot who find her land in the Keys, as in the Florida Keys, the real threat begins. Yeah, so I was right, like Florida, Florida Keys. So yeah. That one looks really good. So again, a love inspired suspense, an inspirational romantic suspense novel. Another one that is non-category, but I could not pass this book up when I saw it. We have Glory by Heather Graham. You guys know what a big fan of Heather Graham I am. That rhymed. And this is a historical romance novel. Uh, rebel medic Julian McKenzie is at his wit's end with hunger and sickness running rampant through the ill-equipped Confederate army may not uh you know be the best book to read but read it with a grain of salt essentially uh but a miracle occurs in the form of rihanna termine branded a white witch because of her healing powers in second sight the exotic beauty is also a union sympathizer in desperate need of her skills julian kidnaps her and falls under the spell of a woman whose passion and courage will blur the battle lines of the Civil War and tear his heart apart. So she wrote a lot of these Civil War romances back in the day. Unfortunately, a lot of them did have Confederate soldiers or those who were on the Confederate side, if you will, as the leads. And it's very difficult nowadays to read a book where that's the case because, yeah... I'm not going to get into it. But the reason I picked this up is I am a fan of Heather Graham. I do really like her books. Again, this is one that I would absolutely read with a, uh, uh, um, with a grain of salt. But the biggest reason I got it is, guys, it had a step back. <laughs> you can't say no to a step back. Like, come on. <sighs> That's so great, isn't it? Oh, this is part of a series. Uh, Don't Miss Heather Graham, Sensual Civil War Romances. So there is Surrender, Rebel, Captive, and this one is Glory. Um, yeah, so it's a thing. This is a Topaz book. It came out in 1999 and I'm in, guys, it has a family tree in it. That's pretty cool. And 
what interests me, and I need to read some more on this and find out what's going on here. It says Topaz Historical Romance, right? But it's numbered, it says JE848. Can you guys see that? I don't think you'll be able to see that. Let me try and, there you go. 848 on the side there. So I am very, very, very interested into what that means. I don't think it's category, but I'm curious. So we shall see, we shall see. All right, I will report back. Next batch of books, we have a Harlequin Romantic Suspense. This is a bit more of a recent one. This is The Agent's Covert Affair by Karen Anders. So this is number 1964 from October of 2017. There's a whole bunch of them from 2017. So somebody must have dropped off a bunch of them. So yeah, so there's that one. And then we have, oh, finally, another one of these um, First Love from Silhouette. It says America's favorite teenage romance, but these seem to be like intriguey. Like that first one was about a ghost ship. This one looks like there's a theft going on. So it's called Stop Thief. And this is by Dorothy Francis. So yeah, really neat. This is number 185. So what was the other number that I got? 189. So somebody clearly had these and brought them in. Um... Interesting. This is from 1986. So that she does a... Okay, so hold on. Vani was above her head. So I was just looking here in the front. And Dorothy Francis, um, she wrote a bunch of different Vani books. Like, so uh, an, again, books that feature this character. So there's Special Girl, Bid for Romance, Write On, and Stop Thief. She wrote the first book in the love... Um, in the first love series called New Boy in Town. I have to look for that one. Maybe thrift books. I can find it. So there's that. Uh, I got this one just because I thought the cover was so adorable. And this is called On Pins and Needles by Victoria Paday. Um, number 1443. It is a formerly silhouette, now Harlequin special edition novel from June of 2002. So this is a 20-year-old book. But look at them. They're kind of dancing. Isn't that cute? Oh. Of all the nerve... Uh, why Josh Brimley not only expressed doubt about Megan Bailey's, uh, Brimley and her, her last name is Bailey's, medical abilities, but the handsome sheriff actually, actually accused her family of having a buried skeleton in the backyard 18 years ago. Megan knew she'd have her work cut out for herself, convincing the town folk of Elk Creek to buy into her non-traditional treatments, but Josh's theories and sizzling pecks threw an unexpected wrench into things. <laughs> But just, again, that cover is just the sweetest. I thought it was so cute. So, and then these ones, like, often would have, like, something on the back as well. So, yeah, there's that one. Um, then we have One Moment Past Midnight by Emily Richards. This is a Silhouettes Intimate Moments, which is now a Harlequin Romantic Suspense novel. This is number 949, and it is from, I think that's September of 99. So, yeah, nice cover on that one. The guy kind of looks like Brendan Fraser, sort of, kind of, right? So, yeah. That one looks really good. Um, next, we have a bit more of a recent one. Um, Texas Stalker by Barb Hahn. I do love Barb Hahn's work. Can a man from her past protect her from a stalker? So, this is number 2031 from November of 2021. So, it's not quite a year old. Yeah, there's that one. And just a couple more... Okay, more than a couple more. Um, next up, oh, we have another um, uh, First Love from Silhouette. This is number 219, and this is from January of 87. And this is called Behind the Mask by Glenn Ebish. Look at that one, you guys. Scared to death. Katie was consent to let herself drift. She had a quiet life with her Aunt Hope. She had a sweet, if somewhat forgetful, boyfriend and a part-time job at the museum. Nothing exciting ever came her way. Then one day, strange things started to happen at the museum. Scary things involving a mysterious um, spear and mask. What was going on? Was it magic or was someone playing a dangerous game? Katie decides to find out, even if it means making some tough decisions. Sounds really good, right? Like, oh, 
I'm so thrilled I found some of these. Like, so thrilled. You guys have no idea. It makes me so happy. And clearly, this is a gentleman who wrote this, which is great. I think that's absolutely fantastic. And it says right in the front that it's, like, in his author bio. So, that's cool. I got a Love Swept novel. I found one of these. Number 595. This is The Touch of Max by Kay Hopper. Hooper? Hopper? Um, and this is from... Doesn't tell me the year. What year is this from? Oh, yes. Again, for those of you who have not seen any of these before, I wish Harlequin and Silhouette had done this, but the author photo is right in the front. That is just so much fun. Um, so we can see the lovely person who wrote these books. February of 93. There's that one. My husband was holding these in line for me when we were checking out. And he's looking at the cover. He goes, why don't you ever just wear a towel for me? Like, <laughs> I'm like, pretty sure her gown's supposed to be sparkly or something. But yeah, so there's that one. Then we have a uh, Cheryl Woods. I love Cheryl Woods books. This is another Silhouette Special Edition, now Harlequin Special Edition. Number 1549 from July of 2003. This is Patrick's Destiny. I almost said des density. I was channeling the father from um, Back to the Future. <laughs> you are my density. <laughs> Patrick's Destiny. <laughs> So yeah, so like gorgeous cover. And then again, wraps around onto the back. So this is part of the uh, uh, Devane, De Devaney series. Five brothers torn apart in childhood, reunited by love. So yeah, so that's one of those books. Anytime I see a Cheryl Woods category, I pick it up. Um, I got another Love Sweat book. This is number 569 and it's by Olivia Rupachet. This is Saints and Sinners. And again, where's our author photo? There's no author. I'm very disappointed now. Oh, why would they stop doing that? That was a great selling feature. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, there's that one. This one is from, what's the year on this one? September of 92. So there's that one. And I think five, six more here, you guys. All right. We grab all of these out of the bag. So we have uh, the last, I think. This might be the last of those um, First Love from Silhouette books. This is number 187, and it's Birds of a Feather by Janice Harrell. Look at the hair. <laughs> that feathered 80s hair. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah. 1986. Then we have this one, Fudge Balls and Other Sweets by Lori Copeland. This is number 41 in the Harlequin Love and Laughter line. A lot of fun with the two dogs. Princess the Poodle had a perfectly glorious life, a dog's life, in fact, until that annoying bulldog Jake moved in next door. So it's clearly about two people who have two very different dogs. And uh, maybe his name is Fudge Balls? I don't know. No, it's Jake. I don't know. This one sounds like fun. The love and laughter line were like uh, romantic comedies. They were, they were a lot of fun. Um, Bachelor in Need by Jessica Steele. This is a Harlequin romance, number 3615. Um, from August of 2000. So this is when I started reading the romance line is when the covers look like this. It's kind of like off white color with the green. You know, that's, to me, that's an iconic romance cover. I know now for a lot of people, it's the pink spine books. Oh, I got one closer at hand. So for most people now, this is the iconic, like the pink, right? But for me, this is when I started reading the romance line, this is what they look like. So yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. She is a good author. I've read her before. Another one of the newer ones that I got, very happy to have this one in my hand in physical format because I absolutely love this author. And we have A Starlit Summer by Michelle Major. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, this is part of the Welcome to Starlight series. So this is number 2914, Harlequin Special Edition, from June of 2022. So yeah, so there's that one. Couple more. Okay, so, oh no, 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 this is, this is a category. Okay. Um, this is a Harlequin Super Romance, number 565, and this is Marissa Carroll, 
Hawk's Lair. Look at that cover, you guys. She put an end to this nonsense, it says on the back. Sarah Riley couldn't believe her normally sane brother was planning to invest in a search for buried treasure in Costa Rica. Just who was this J.C. Hawk, who claimed his great-great-great-grandmother had been a pirate's mistress? And how had he persuaded Elliot to take leave of his senses? Mr. Hawk was in for a surprise. Sarah was on her way to Costa Rica. She'd set Hawk straight and talk sense into Elliot, and she'd fly home to Indiana. That was the plan. Then she met the mysterious J.C. Hawk, and suddenly what seemed like utter nonsense began to make perfect sense. <laughs> With the tree, it looks like he's got, like, his hairs, like, blowing in the wind. And when I first glanced at the cover, because I couldn't really read it that easy, I thought it said, like, hawk's hair. I'm like, well, that kind of makes sense. You know, right? No. Um, this is from September of 93. So, yay on this one. And I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh, it doesn't have a step back. But no, there's no step back. It's just got this gold edge to it. <laughs> but that's fun, too. So, yeah, there's that one. Two more, my friends. Two more. An old silhouette intimate moments, which as I've already mentioned, is now the uh, Harlequin Romantic Suspense line. We have Above Suspicion by Andrea Edwards. So yeah. When attorney Jonathan T uh, Tyler meets Claire Haywood, he, is sh he was shocked. Not only was the bewitching woman the image of his late wife, she was also in deep trouble. John wanted to help Claire, but when he discovered she was spying on him, he wondered if her words of endearment were nothing but lies. So, yeah. Interesting on that one. And last but not least, the final book in this huge haul, The Daddy Catch by Lee Duncan. This is part of the Fatherhood series in the um, Harlequin American Romance line, which is still one of my favorite lines. It's no longer around. These kind of melded into the heartwarming books. You'll see a lot of the heartwarming books are like Western cowboy family oriented. And these were very much that. Um, I loved this series so much, like love, hope, and happiness is what it says on the back. And that's what these were. They were great family contemporaries, family, small town, that kind of thing. So this one is just adorable. And I saw it and I decided to pick it up. So like I said, it says fatherhood here. So there was a long running series called the fatherhood Lo series and you don't have to read them in order. They all essentially were just books that featured single fathers. So yeah. So anyway, guys, a ton of books. And like I said, probably around $20. So not too shabby on that one. And one book, unfortunately, that we are going to have to throw out because I'm pretty sure it's mold. I'm almost guaranteed that's mold. That's going in the garbage. But anyway, guys, um, that's it for this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know. Chances are probably not, but have any of you read any of the books that I showed? Have you ever seen or read the Harl or the Silhouette uh, First Love series? Because um, I would love to know if any of you had the chance to read any of these books when you were growing up. Um, I'd love to know that as well. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you.